Tonight on Let's Get to the Points, we talk everything about American Express. Nicole, this is American Express episode. Please, can you hold all your Chase and Hyatt stuff <laughs> for another one? Oh, Miguel, you're always getting me to switch my idea at the last minute. I was like, I'm with you guys. I'm going to cancel. Yeah. And I forgot about my freeloaders. You've been talking about this card since season one. It'll be the end of an era. Ever since Serena talked about being in pop-up jail because of that personal card, I've always wanted to maintain this relationship. I don't even have this card. Cue the jail. <laughs> Cue the jail. <laughs> and now, let's get to the points. She loves traveling luxuriously for a fraction of the cost. It's Serena. He embraces every travel experience, and he proves adventure is found everywhere. It's Miguel. She teaches you and your family to travel on a budget while indulging in a little bit of occasional luxury. It's Nicole. And he loves using his points to fly some of the world's best airlines in first class. It's Mitch Shannon. Welcome and thank you for joining us on Let's Get to the Points, video and audio podcast where we bring you the very best in tips and tricks in the world of miles, points, and travel. I'm Mitch Shannon and I am joined by my co-hosts who love traveling the world with their families using their credit card points and miles. First up, no one loves points and miles more than her. It's Serena. Hi, everyone. He's always on the hunt for the best deals and points and miles. It's Miguel. Yeah, what's up? And her award calendar is currently opened all the way through 2026. It's Nicole. <laughs> Hi, guys. How are you? Please help us out. Click that subscribe button now to our YouTube channel, Spotify, Apple Podcast, or wherever you watch or listen. Also, give us a like. That's your cue, Miguel. And leave us a comment below and let us know what you think about our show. Let's do it. Let's get to the points. All right. Tonight, we're going to focus on American Express and why we never leave home without it. There are a lot of rules and strategies with them, and we're going to go a little more in depth with them. And we're going to talk about all the changes about the American Express gold card and should we keep it or not. All right. So let's get started tonight. And Serena, you're going to lead the way. Tell us how this is going to go tonight. American Express is such a valuable program. So it's very important that we cover this. So today we're going to talk about application rules, some things to keep in mind when you're using American Express cards, the American Express trifecta, the American Express gold card changes and whether we should keep or cancel it, and then why we like American Express points so much. Let's just jump into it with the application rules. With American Express, there are two different kinds of cards. There are credit cards that have a spending limit and there are cards with no preset spending limit. These are also known as payover time cards. We talked more about these differences in episode 66, our favorite keeper cards, if you'd like to go back and refer to that episode. We also talked about the Amex 5 credit card rule in that episode. Cards with no preset spending limit are the platinum, the gold, and the green. Credit cards are everything else, like the blues, everyday cards, Hilton, Marriott's, and Delta cards. There are several rules to keep in mind when applying for American Express cards. There is the one in five rule where you will only be approved for one credit card every five days. And this typically only applies to credit cards and does not apply to cards with no preset spending limit. There is also the two in 90 day rule where you will only be approved for two credit cards every 90 days. This also typically only applies to credit cards. And then there's the once in a lifetime rule where you can only get a welcome offer on a card once per lifetime. However, you may be able to get it again after seven years. I know that's a lot already, but there's more. In addition, there are family language rules. For more about this, you can watch episode 65, which is part two of our beginner's guide. And Mitch talked about family language rules and no life time limit offers on cards. Family language means if you already had a card in a particular card family, you will not be eligible for the welcome offer for another card in that family. The consumer platinum, gold, and green cards are considered a family and they have family language rules. So if I get the platinum card and get that bonus, I will not be able to get the welcome offer for the gold or the green card after that. Because of this, you should get these cards in a preferred order. 
Ideally, you would want the green card first, then the gold card, and then the platinum card. And the best strategy is to wait for higher bonuses on these cards before you get them. So how do you guys go about finding these high bonuses on these cards? I read the Let's Get to the Points newsletter every Friday to find out about the highest offers. That's a great idea. Miguel, <laughs> put up your hand. Mitch is going to put the QR code on your hand so oh. you could subscribe to our newsletter. I solemnly swear that if we know there's a high <laughs> elevated bonus offer on one of these cards, we're going to send it out in the newsletter on a Friday. Just yeah. scan the hand. Yeah. Sometimes some of these high offers could be in friends or family's referral links. We will also tell you in the newsletter if these offers are available through referral to check with a friend or family member because you always want to use a referral link when applying for a credit card. American Express has a very generous referral program and you can even refer people to cards even when you don't have that card. I don't have the Amex Gold card, for example, but I could still refer my friends and family to the Gold card if I just have, for example, the Business Gold card. And one of the great things about the referral is that let's say it's not the highest offer, but maybe like if it's a player one or a player two in the same household, let's say, for example, my husband and I, and the bonus is a little bit less, but with the referral added together, that might be more than a public offer. So also take a look at the combination of the points you get from referral and the offer itself. And like Nicole says, if the math is mathing, then maybe that's the way to go. Yeah, I really like how you can refer somebody else to American Express cards. And it doesn't matter which card you have. For example, if I have a 30,000 point bonus point referral offer to refer somebody to the business platinum, and maybe they don't want that card. I could just send them that link and they can click on view all cards and any card they choose. It could be a Hilton card, a Marriott card, a Delta card, any card that they pick. I would still get those 30,000 points no matter which card they get. I mean, they could even get the Lowe's card and I would still get my 30,000 points. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a very good point. I don't think a lot of people know that that A, no matter what card they get, you get that referral offer and you can apply for any American Express card including business cards. If you don't have access to referral links, you can ask us to see if we have a referral link with a high offer on it. And another option is to look at our affiliate link. Typically our affiliate links don't have the highest offer out there, but sometimes when you click on it in incognito mode or in private mode on different browsers, you might get targeted for a higher offer. That's right, Serena. Listen, we're honest folk here. We are not gonna steer you in the wrong direction. So if you're not sure, or you don't know which offers right, ask us. We are going to make sure that you pick the highest offer possible because we want you to win. Because when you win, we all win. Another way to find elevated offers that you might be targeted for is by using Card Match. Card Match is a tool where they will aggregate a list of card offers for you. We have a link to Card Match in our show notes if you want to check that out. You would put in your information and they would only do a soft pull and send you a list of cards with offers on them. And if you're lucky, you might see an American Express card on there. More on application rules for American Express co-branded hotel cards. Delta has family language on their consumer cards. The Marriott cards has a crazy set of rules. And then the Hilton cards do not have family language rules as of this recording. So with all these rules, there is no way we can remember all of the rules involved with these applications. The good thing is American Express has this tool. So when you apply for a card, a box will pop up and let you know whether or not you qualify for the offer. Sounds like you're familiar with that tool. <laughs> <laughs> Very much so. When you get this tool to pop up, it gives you two options. Do you want to continue with the application? I'm not sure who would, but maybe you do. Or you can cancel your application and they won't do a hard pull on your credit, which I think is very nice of them. Some card holders are like, you're going to apply and we'll be like, mm, not today. That's definitely an advantage with American Express. I personally love how American Express put this tool in there to notify us about whether we are eligible for an offer. Because way back in the day, I applied for a card. I was approved. I met the spend, but I didn't get the bonus. And the reason was because I had the card before. And that was such a sad day for me because that's just wasted spend. Yeah. Yep. Ugh. yep. Yeah. This tool was very helpful a few weeks ago when we applied for the Hilton No Annual Fee card. For what reason? They told James that he already had this card. Maybe it was with his first wife in another life. <laughs> 
I don't know, but I've never seen a Hilton card here. And I was like, oh, I guess we're not getting an annual fee, but they approved the surpass. So I'm grateful for that too. Here are some things to keep in mind with American Express. A lot of the no pre-spend limit cards have credits. There usually is a large annual fee and you can offset them by using the credits. So for example, the Amex Business Platinum has a Dell credit. You want to make sure you utilize those two sets of $200 credits in order to maximize your annual fee. On the personal cards, on the Platinum and on the Gold, they have Uber credits. These are monthly credits. You want to make sure you take advantage of them. Traveling outside of the U.S., you're unable to use those Uber credits. And since I don't usually take Uber here in the U.S., I use my Uber credits for, and here's a hot tip, for Postmates. It's run by the same company, but Postmates loves to offer buy one, get one free. So I feel like I'm doubling up on my credits. I don't know. That might be like girl math because I'm a maximizer. I don't have my food delivered. I go and pick it up. So I get all of my $10 and $20 credits in food and not delivery fees. You want to make sure before you decide if you're going to keep or cancel this card that you use all of the credits possible. If it even means you use your credits to buy a gift for someone else, it's better to use them than to lose them. Another thing you want to remember, speaking of gifts, you don't want to use your American Express to buy too many gift cards. American Express is very sensitive on spending your money on gift cards. The reason you don't want to buy gift cards with your American Express card or excessively buy gift cards with your Amex card is because they deem it as cash equivalent and those are not eligible for your bonus. If you are thinking about canceling your Amex card, make sure to keep it for at least a year or esteemed co-host has talked about it several times when she cancels her card before the end of the year and now she is in pop-up jail. Who would you be talking about? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Instead of pop-up jail, today she referred to it as as a tool, but we're... A handy tool. A handy tool. Mitch, you need to come up with some kind of graphic where you put like bars in front of Serena. (laughs) Oh, we did that in the first episode. We've done that before. We'll bring it back. We'll bring it back. Highlight episode. Those bars should be in front of Serena's screen until she's out of jail. (laughs) This is true. It's probably going to take many years. That goes to tell you how important this is. Because how long have you been in pop-up jail, Serena? So long. I'm not even trying to get out of it at this point. (laughs) You have literally built a bridge and gotten over it. If you made it to the end of the year and you decide, I don't want this card. One more thing before you cancel, you want to ask for a retention offer. Sometimes these retention offers are amazing. Spend $2,000, get 20,000 membership rewards points. I mean, that's kind of hard for me to say no to. But for everyone else, I don't know, but it doesn't hurt to ask for these retention offers. If the retention offer is not something that's appeasing to you, by all means, go ahead and cancel. Nicole, I love how you brought up these credits. I don't have the platinum card, of course. Neither do I. One of your players does, I'm sure. (laughs) Okay, we don't have the consumer platinum card in our household because everyone's in pop-up jail. So I'm not used to managing all these credits. Do you guys have a magic system for managing all these credits and making sure you're using them all? Magic system. (laughs) Let me guess, Nicole, it's your notes <laughs> on you your know, That's exactly what it is. I have like a first of the month's notes, uh-huh. and then I go in and I check off which one I used. I'm not that sophisticated. That's pretty good, though. You have your own checklist. That's really yeah. good. You need something with managing all these credits because $10 here, $10 there, they add up. And if you're not using them, you're basically throwing the money away. An app that could be useful for monitoring your monthly credits is the Card Pointers app. There is a feature in the app that helps you monitor and track your monthly credits. In the show notes, we're going to leave a link for card pointers if you'd like to try it out and get a special discount. I also love, Nicole, how you mentioned Postmates because I didn't know about that. And I thought you were actually going to say Uber Eats, but instead you said Postmates, which which surprised me. But another trick that I've heard of, so the Platinum has this Equinox credit. Are you Mm -hmm. guys familiar with that? Mm -hmm. Yes. I heard that you can book a spa, like a massage at one of the Equinox gyms. Supposedly when you pay for that, you'll get the credit on your Platinum card. I have heard of that. I don't think I have those gyms here anyway so (laughs) in El Paso I doubt that very much 
I wish I knew that before I canceled my car because that was one of the credits I didn't get to use. There are two Equinox in Miami. Well, Miguel, maybe when you come to LA for our meetup, you can schedule a massage Ooh. at an Equinox. Yeah, I'll maximize my credit. Right after he goes to Erewhon and spends $18 <laughs> on a smoothie, it was like you're going to need the massage yeah, after yeah. that. $20 smoothie. But I earned 80 points because I used my Amex Gold. So <laughs> I would um, label that as how not to earn 80 points on Amex Gold, but you know, to each his own. Another way we can maximize these credits that American Express has on some of these cards is the timing of the application. For example, some of these cards have a $200 airline credit, and that is based off of calendar year. Let's say you apply for the American Express Platinum card in December. You would be eligible to get that statement credit for an airline in December of year zero when you apply for the card. And the following calendar year, you would get the $200 again. And then you could still use it in January of year two and get the $200 off. Now, at this point, you will have paid for the annual fee at your anniversary sometime in December, but you would have about 30 days to cancel that card and get a refund on the annual fee. And you did a triple dip on this airline credit. So you could essentially get $600 airline credit alone off of paying one annual fee for this card. You know, I've always wanted to do the triple dip, but then I get a offer in the mail that is hard to resist. And I'm like, e, do I want to trade in 20,000 points for 200 extra dollars? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> a few episodes ago in show 63, we discussed the best three card combo. If we could only choose three cards, which set of three cards, which we all get. Now, today we'll discuss which three American Express cards should you get if you want to maximize the amount of American Express points that you want to earn. If you wanted to get an American Express trifecta, the best three cards to earn the maximum amount of points, we recommend you start out with the American Express Gold Card. The American Express Gold Card is great for earning four times the points on supermarkets and dining out. And then after you get the gold card, you could get the American Express Platinum card. They're in the same family, but because you got the gold first, you should be eligible for a bonus on the Platinum card. Now, the Platinum card is not really a card that you use for everyday spending. It earns five times the points on flights booked directly with airlines. Now, the American Express Platinum card does come with a high annual fee, but it does come with a lot of credits that could help offset that annual fee. And the other thing that's great about this is that it usually can come with a very high sign-up bonus, which would give you a lot of points, enough to cover that first annual fee at least because it would give you a lot of points to start out with. For the Platinum card, you could choose either the consumer version, the personal, or the business version. And they have slightly different credits. So you want to research and see which credits better suit your lifestyle. But the other great thing about having the Platinum card is all the benefits and perks that it comes with. Things like purchase protection, return protection, extended warranty, and travel insurance. Wait, Miguel, don't forget the emergency helicopter. <laughs> exactly. There's the emergency medical evacuation that, you know, hopefully we never need, but that is another great benefit of having the Platinum card. So this card, aside for flights or travel book directly with American Express Travel, you wouldn't really use it because it would only earn one point per dollar on everything else. But that is where the third card comes into play. The third card is a Blue Business Plus. This card has no annual fee. It is a business card, but it will be earning two times the points on anything, no matter which category. So anything that you don't use the gold card or the Platinum card for, you could use this and earn two times the points. It does have a cap of 50 thousand dollars per year and after fifty thousand dollars you would only earn one point per dollar yeah because if you're spending fifty thousand dollars a year on a card we need to talk a reason to leave the blue business plus for later on and apply for it after you have your gold and platinum card is that once you establish a relationship with american express they're more likely to offer you a targeted sign up offer for this blue business plus if you already have a relationship for them because when i got the blue business plus card i didn't get a sign up offer so i only got the card because i wanted to earn the two times a point on everything else that I wasn't using my gold or platinum cards for. And it had a $0 annual fee. One thing to note is that they usually charge a foreign transaction fee on the Blue Business Plus. It's currently waived, but we don't know how long that's going to last. So just make sure you read all your terms and conditions when you're applying for these cards. And there are some people who are not willing to pay, you know, $695 for the American Express platinum card. That is a lot of money. We understand that. And if you're one of those people, another option instead of getting the platinum card would be to get the green card in this situation because of the family language rules is that you would want to start out with the American Express green card first, which earns three times the points on all travel and transit, and then move on to the gold card after that, and then the Blue Business Plus. Miguel, show us your trifecta. So here's my trifecta. This is an old platinum card because it's an old design. It still said a platinum on here. This is my current gold card, and then the Blue Business Plus. This is the old design because there's a new Blue like, Business Plus. So maybe, like that. Yeah. maybe I should uh, request a new design anyway. I kind of like this one because it's see 
through, but mine looks like yours, Miguel. Fun fact, my first American Express card looks like that. I don't think it was a business blue, it was a blue card. Is the it Delta that your Delta blue, blue card that you <laughs> talked about? No, no, actually it was what I downgraded to because the first one had an annual fee and I was like, uh uh-uh, uh, drop me down to a no annual fee card. Someone in the comments, Nicole, knew what card that you were talking about. So they must have the same card as you too. They know the Delta Blue. <laughs> yeah, the Delta Blue. <laughs> this one commenter said she had the Delta Blue for 20 years. Yeah. She actually forgot about it. That's what happened to me. And then I logged in and I had 160,000 points. And I was like, did I spend $160,000? But today, funny enough, I, I thought about, I should upgrade my Delta card because I want that 15% off the points. And I'm like, oh, wait, there's an annual fee. Scratch that. <laughs> yeah. And it, it went up too. It was about $100. Now it's like 150 I don't think it's worth it anymore. Unless you fly Delta two or three times a year and check bags. So our trifecta could be different from your trifecta. This is a mix and match sort of situation. It's not a one size fits all. So you could swap out the blue business if you didn't want a business card and maybe get an everyday or an everyday preferred card. Let us know in the comments what your American Express trifecta is. Or if you have a quadfecta, let us know too. So trifecta is a group of three. I asked ChatGPT what a group of 20 is. It says ikosa, derived from the Greek word for 20. Eikosi is a group of 20. So maybe Mitch has an ikosa fecta <laughs> with all his cards. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't it be great if we could have 20 American Express cards? Isn't that you in real life? <laughs> Who says Serena does? Well, in that trifecta that you pointed out, Miguel, there is one card that we talk a lot about on this show, and it's the American Express Gold card. And it just received some enhancements. And in credit card lingo talk, we know what that means, right? Raising the annual fee. So they just raised the fee up $75. It's now $325. And they made a couple of changes as well. So let's just kind of walk through some of these changes real quick in case you haven't been paying attention to the American Express Gold Card, or maybe you don't have it. So the first one, they've changed that on the restaurants that you only get four times the points on the first 50,000 that you spend worldwide. That is one possibly negative change. I don't know who would be spending more than $50,000 at restaurants in a year? You. <laughs> you. Does everyone count as a restaurant or supermarket or double dip? Which one? You're getting a smoothie, maybe a restaurant, but if you get groceries, maybe supermarket. But I think I know somebody, somebody on this show that might be close to that $50,000. <laughs> Another perk of the card is getting four times the points at grocery stores up to $25,000. So that's Mitch, not- you're going to have to find you a new card. I, I mean, know. 25, it's not enough. <laughs> That's just not going to cut it anymore, right? No. Other things that you can get on the card, three times the points on flights or airlines that are booked with Amex Travel or directly with the airline. You get two times the points on the prepaid hotels and other eligible travels purchased via Amex Travel. Now, here's a couple of things that they've changed with the card since they've upped the annual fee. They now have a $400 value that they're saying that you get with this card. So what is it? They have the Resi credit twice per calendar year, you're going to get a $50 credit if you dine at one of the Resi restaurants. And I don't know about you guys, but I was kind of looking at that in my area. A little bit limited, not really a big choice of restaurants that I get for that $50. Have you guys looked to see what you can spend your $50 on? There's like two places. I completely forgot about it till right now. I don't even have this card. <laughs> oh, wow. Cue the jail. Cue the jail. <laughs> the other thing that they've added now is Dunkin' Donuts credit. So you get $7 and that's just so random, isn't it? $7 a month. It's like a cup of coffee. So Mitch, you don't eat donuts. Yeah, I don't. What do you do with your Dunkin' credit? Probably just loading up that uh, wallet, that digital wallet for the next meetup so it can bring donuts. Ooh, good <laughs> idea. Yeah. Ooh, and then I can expense it with Let's Get to the Point points too, right? So I just cashed out that credit. <laughs> yes. Mitch, you know who likes Dunkin' Donuts? Nyla. Ooh. <laughs> Doesn't like Randy's, but she likes Dunkin'. Okay. So I've heard you can use those Dunkin' credits at Baskin Robbins as well. But Mitch, you don't eat mm. ice cream either. So that doesn't help you. That's interesting. Yeah. I don't do ice cream as well, but Baskin Robbins, 31. 31. 31. <laughs> That's what my mother-in-law calls Showing your age, Mitch. <laughs> Showing your age. Mitch has got 31 flavors of credit cards. 
cards. <laughs> <laughs> a lot, right? I can say, though, that it does work for the Duncan wallet because that's what I've been doing. I've been loading my Duncan app and I've been getting that. So we got two gold cards. I've been getting $14 a month in credits that I've been loading to the wallet that we haven't been spending. So I have the perfect idea for the Duncan wallet. Ooh, if you're yes. coming to the meetup on the West Coast, the best coast. <laughs> she, we so brainwashed her. <laughs> Nicole's so brainwashed. Now she's a West Coast. She just said, "You know what? I'm not even going to fight it." It's just it's Go sarcasm ahead. at this point. No, you believe we can bring you guys donuts. Do you like Dunkin' Donuts? Uh, I mean, might as well, right? It's the credit that keeps on giving. That's right. Do you like strawberry? Do you like coconut? We're going to bring them for you. Yeah, the problem with that, Nicole, is is we don't have a lot of Dunkin' Donuts on the West Coast, so I'm going to have to go out of my way to get don't. Dunkin' Donuts for everyone. Pre-place your orders and let me know. <laughs> Other benefit of the card is it's got the Uber Cash credit for. You get $120 a year, $10 a month. And then it's got the dining credit, which is the same $10 a month, $120 a year. And they've kind of changed that a little bit. It's got Cheesecake Factory, Gold Belly, Wine.com, Five Guys, and Grubhub. Those are some of the perks and the benefits that they've changed since they've upped the annual fees. So I guess that raises the question, do you guys want to keep this card another year now that they've raised the annual fee? Nope. Okay. Wow. No, Miguel knows right away. No, I'm done with yeah. it. I don't have Cheesecake Factory or whatever. I do have Five Guys, so that would be interesting, except I went there a month ago and it's so expensive. Like one combo was like $24. Yeah. So oh even my God, burger, really? No way. Yeah. So yeah. even, yes, one burger, fries, and a drink was $24. So if I go to Five Guys and even get $7 off, it's still more expensive than just going to Whataburger. So Jeez. nah, I'm done with a gold wow. card. Well, I have three, so I might keep one. <laughs> I'm done, with, I'm done with it, like, partly. He wants to use it at Baskin Robbins. But I'll keep it. No, because my it's under my wife's name, and I'm an authorized user, so I want that ability to transfer her American Express points over to my loyalty accounts. So I want to keep one because we have that link. Oh, Miguel, you're always, like, you're always getting me to switch my idea at the last bit. I was like, I'm with you guys. I'm going to cancel. Yeah. And I forgot about my freeloaders and their <laughs> authorized user cards. And since my son is going to go off to college soon, you know, I might want to be able to transfer points to his account. But I was thinking like, you do get four points per dollar at supermarkets, but an alternative if you really want to maximize and work around is to get these no fee gift cards and use your Chase Inc. That's five times the points and you can get it on whatever you use these gift cards on. That's what had me thinking that if I get rid of this, I'll just go the ink route. Nicole, this is American Express episode. Please, can you hold all your Chase and Hyatt stuff <laughs> for another one? All right, fair oh, enough. Fine. Mitch, what do you do with your dining credit? Good question. So in our household, we have a cheesecake bakery and there's a reason why I call it bakery and not factory. And I'll tell you in just a minute. That's what we do. We go to Cheesecake Bakery every month and we go to the gift counter there where the cheesecakes are and we'll get the $10 credit and then we'll save those gift cards and we'll use them. We'll all kind of go at one time and just kind of blow it out. Now, the reason we call it Cheesecake Bakery in our house is because my mother-in-law, she can't say factory. She calls it Cheesecake. <laughs> so, because... <laughs> so because she calls it <laughs> that we have to say Cheesecake Bakery. So that's why we've called that restaurant that name. It's pretty hilarious. So we'll say, hey, mama, you want to go to Cheesecake Bakery? And yeah, that's we'll go to Cheesecake Bakery. Oh, my gosh. What a funny story. Yeah. I thought you were going to say something about the delicious brown bread they have. So she likes the clam chowder. That's her favorite thing at Cheesecake Bakery is the clam chowder. She says it's creamy and it's good. That's going to live right free in my head forever. <laughs> that and hey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'll try to get video of her saying cheesecake up. <laughs> That's what she says. <laughs> she has Please problems do. with the F. <laughs> Please do. Please. We need that. If you want to see role. Mitch's mother-in-law talk about her favorite restaurant, <laughs> comment bakery below and we'll try to see if we can get you that video. But that's what we use our $10 credit on each month. But here's the thing, right? So we've got two of these gold cards in our house. Actually, they both have it. So like all four of us, the brother-in-law, the mother-in-law, we all have the gold card. I have been hellbent on keeping this card just for the 4X because I've always loved that feature about it. But now I'm kind of to that point of I kind of agree with you. Do we need to keep this card another year? Do we need to have four of these? Could we maybe consolidate down to one? The annual fee, I think where I am is unless I get a really good retention offer on both of these cards next year, I think I'm just going to let it go. I think that's the way to move forward with this. <sighs> 
You've been talking about this card since season one. I know. It'll be the end of an era. Here's my other caveat about the Amex Gold. Ever since Serena talked about being in pop-up jail because of that personal card, I've always wanted to maintain this relationship with Amex and a personal mm -hmm. card. Well, I do have a lot of business cards with them. This, well, now the Hilton card. I don't know. I can't believe I said that. <laughs> are, are my only two personal cards, right? And I obviously don't plan to keep the Hilton card long term, but I'm considering like, do I want to keep it so I have at least one personal card with them? But then I also look at Serena and she has none and have multiple business platinum. So, you know, it could go either way. <laughs> And I'm doing okay. You're doing a little more than okay, Serena. I think for me, I am down to the point of where I am coupon fatigued out with American mm. Express. I'm tired of tracking and tracing and trying to remember, especially with like three to four people. Did we get all our credits? Did we use all our credits? It's just, I'm tired of it. It's just too much. Are you tired of sitting in the back next to the lab? Oh, yeah. <laughs> How <laughs> tired are you? Yeah, that's a good point. Okay, so keep or cancel? Everybody answer. Cancel all but one. I think I'm going to go one more year. I think the annual fee and the cost of doing the credits is just a cost of doing business. I feel like if I pay my pittance, then American Express will award me in the end. I'll report back and let you know. I use my credits for Grubhub. So I just do Chipotle pickup. It's expensive, but uh, you know, burritos be like $15 minus 10. I'm paying five, but I'm only doing it because I have the credit. It's not like I would be going every month. But I'm just going to keep that one, but because of the ability to transfer points from my my wife's account to my loyalty accounts. I'll tell you exactly where I am, Nicole. So I am going to see if I can get a retention offer on this card. And if they don't give me maybe 20, 30,000 bonus points for keeping this card for another year, I think I'm going to cancel. And I know that's hard for me to say, but if I do cancel, Nicole, I'm going to need other options. What options should I go with? You know where my heart lies. Miguel was trying to shut me up, but <laughs> I would go with a Chase Ink card, especially especially if you have any of the Sapphire cards. Because with the Chase Ink card, it does require a little bit more work, but you can buy gift cards and then use those gift cards to spend on anything you want. You're not limited to dining or supermarkets and you would get five times the points that you can transfer to my favorite hotel. Hilton. Oh God. <laughs> and while American Express is sensitive to gift card purchases, Chase is not that sensitive. It's okay to buy several gift cards using your Chase Inc. card. What about you, Miguel? What are your alternatives to the Amex Gold? Back in show 54 titled Watch a Supply, we all applied live for a card, either for ourselves or for somebody in our household. So I applied for my player three for the Saver One card. And that is a great card for dining and groceries because you get 3% back on dining and groceries along with streaming. And there's a few other categories. Now, this card does not have an annual fee. It is a cashback card. So when I say 3%, it's really 3%. But if you pair that with a Capital One Venture or Venture X card, you would be able to combine those earnings from your Saver One card where you're earning 3% back or essentially three points or three miles per dollar spent on dining and groceries and combine them with your Capital One Venture Miles where you could transfer them out to their travel partners. A few other things about the Capital One Saver One card. I mentioned it has no annual fee. There are no foreign transaction fees. There's also a 0% APR for 15 months when you initially get this card. And the current offer on the Saver One card is you get $200 back after you spend only $500 on this card. So it's a pretty good offer for very low spend and you could eventually pair with a Capital One Venture, Venture X. You wouldn't quite be earning the four times the points for super supermarkets and dining, but I think three Capital One Venture Miles would be pretty good as well. And Capital One points are very valuable too. So in that same episode, I applied for a card. It was the City Strata Premier card. And Mitch, I think this is a good replacement for your Amex Gold card. And I know how you love City Points because you get to transfer to EVA. And this card gives you 3x on dining and supermarkets, which is not bad. With the City Strata Premier, you can use that card worldwide at supermarkets and get 3x. For the Amex Gold card, you could only get 4x at US supermarkets, not worldwide. So Mitch, you can shop at Erewhon when you give up and move to Thailand. <laughs> we know how much you love your supermarkets. Uh, hey, it's a thing, you know, high-end supermarkets, <laughs> it, that's my middle name. So Mitch, high-end supermarket, high on the hog. <laughs> 
<laughs> high all around. <laughs> so, Mr. High End, I know I don't have the American Express gold card, so I can't empathize with all of you and your plight here, but I still value American <laughs> Express points. I love American Express points because there are lots of transfer partners. Sometimes there are very good transfer bonuses. You can refer to episode 56, where we talked about the best ways to redeem American Express points, and you can get some good ideas on how to use your American Express points. One of the reasons why I love American Express points, aside from the numerous transfer partners that they have, is that there's always like some type of high elevated bonus getting a new card. And sometimes there are those no lifetime language offers, which means you can get maybe the same card multiple times. So there's a lot of ways to get a lot of points. And if you pair that with a transfer bonus, I mean, you're just swimming in points. I love swimming in points. <laughs> so this time I wholeheartedly agree. I love American <laughs> Express. And I am still holding out for the day Amex adds Hyatt as a transfer. <laughs> Keep dreaming. Yeah. You heard it here? <laughs> Dream. Maybe. You never know. It's one to two to Hilton, Nicole, your new love. Why do we keep going? What's it always got to be about Hilton? <laughs> Yeah, one of the things that I love about American Express points so much is I feel like it's really easy to earn points with them. And I call this like the non-traditional way. You'll get a retention offer and you'll get some extra bonus points. You'll add someone as an authorized user. You'll get some extra bonus points. You'll sign up for the pay over time feature and you'll get some extra bonus points. I feel like it's just really easy easy to get points with them when you hold their cards. That's kind of the, my favorite thing about American Express points is they're pretty easy to come by. American Express, lots of bonuses, very mindful. Lots of trend <laughs> partners, oh. very cutesy. <laughs> American Express is very demure. You know what's also very demure? The yeah. amount of wins and losses I got this week. And one of them I share in common with or friend, the real Gene PB. So I posted earlier this week, Points Lottie put out some availability from the US to Hong Kong. And Gene says he got to book his trip to Asia this August. And he's also flying with this deal on Cathay Pacific business class from JFK to Hong Kong. Stargazer 2020 doesn't have a win this week. She has a loss. She placed an order at 7-Eleven to utilize one of her credits. She left it there to go pick it up in about two hours and they canceled her order. They told her after an hour, we cancel orders and she did not get a refund for this order. Oh no. So, oh, so now you got to be mindful when you place these orders not to let it linger. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. I had no idea you could pre-order 7-Eleven too. Yeah. <laughs> I had no idea, Stargazer. Yeah, she said it was, it was like detergent. So it wasn't like it was going to go bad. So she doesn't know why they canceled it. Kazari CZNY. She met a travel hacker at breakfast and they alerted her of a price drop at a hotel for 37%. That's a good deal right there. Yeah. I love meeting other travel hackers in person. I feel like I get all the juicy details there. Cats 75 50 57 is booking business class seats to South Africa for next summer and is going to Cougar National Park. Hungry Barigo, don't rebook when you cancel IHG thinking that the points are going to be less. It isn't. Ah, that's a tough one. I would make sure that my reservation is less before I cancel the points. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we try these things and sometimes we win and sometimes we learn. Mrs. Payne 31, open the City AA card and got the elevated offer of 75,000 points. She is headed to Japan on Friday on a solo trip. Oh, <laughs> she's no, I, I language. Behind the, exactly. <laughs> Japan is always a great idea. And if you want to find availability, you could use our code for Seats.Arrow. Check the show notes. And we also now have a playlist of demos and tutorials for Seats.Arrow. So if you go to our YouTube channel, you're able to see that playlist and learn how to use Seats.Arrow. So check the show notes for a discount code if you want a pro subscription to Seats.Arrow. I don't know why I touched my heart. Because <laughs> it means a lot so to you. Close to your heart. <laughs> Back to you, Nicole. Don't forget to check out the playlist. I can't wait to hear what wins you come up with after using these tutorials from Seats.Arrow. Thank you so much for always sending us your wins and your lessons. We love to share them here on the podcast. So look out next Monday. I'd love to hear from you. Great wins and losses, Nicole. That's it for now. I want to thank all of our hosts. It's Serena. Bye, everyone. Thank you, Miguel. Later. And we'll see you next week. More wins and losses, right, Nicole? More wins and losses next week. See you guys. And I'm Vichana. Make sure you sign up for our email newsletter. Just snap the QR code that's 
what's on your screen right now for the latest and everything going on in the world of points and miles. And we're going to see you here next Friday. Thank you for watching and listening. Let's get to the points.com.